Okay, so let's apply our if and then thinking format to the case of spontaneous generation and the experiments of Francisco Reddy. So re you'll recall that for many, many, many hundreds of years, going back uh, even a couple thousand years, people believed in the process called spontaneous generation. And that was the idea that non-living material, like rotting meat, could spontaneously generate into living things, in this case, worms. Of course, they might have called them worms. We now know them to be maggots, the larvae of flies. But that was uh, particularly sort of a, a, an insight that Francisco Reddy had. He suggested that these worms were not really spontaneously generating from the meat. Rather, they were part of the life cycle of the fly. And so his idea can be seen up here in this diagram that flies were landing on the meat the females were laying eggs, the eggs were hatching into larvae, and then in time those larvae would metamorphize into adult flies. If that's the case, then meat was not spontaneously generating into worms. Rather, the flies were attracted to the meat as a food source for the developing larvae. So, how can we uh, use our thinking format to help us understand Reddy's experiment? Let's take a look. Okay, let's consider first his simplest experiment. Uh, in order to, to test the idea that it was fly access to the meat that was really uh, causing the worms to appear, he set up two jars. One jar was open, so flies had access to the meat, and one jar had a lid on it. Flies were excluded. They couldn't get in. And sure enough, when he did this experiment, uh, the meat that was exposed had worms on it. The meat in the jar did not have worms. And Reddy concluded that, ah, oh, this was evidence that, in fact, you need flies to get at the meat in order for worms to appear. But others at the time might have criticized this experiment by saying that, well, maybe spontaneous generation of meat into uh, worms requires fresh air. And while this one was open to fresh air, maybe there's some kind of uh, either air is necessary itself or maybe there's some force in the air that is necessary that causes spontaneous generation. And because the lid here um, prevented fresh air from getting to the meat, maybe that's why no spontaneous generation happened. So Reddy's going to need to have a another experiment to rule out this possibility. In order to rule out the possibility that fresh air was necessary for spontaneous generation, Reddy had to include a condition where uh, the jar had a cloth cover that would block flies but allow air access to the meat. And so his, uh, we might think of his final experiment as having three conditions. The two original conditions, the open jar, the jar with the lid, and now one with a cloth. Now notice, just to reinforce some scientific lingo here, we would say that if the variable of the experiment is fly access to the meat, the variable's the thing we're interested in testing, we want to know whether fly access to the meat is causing worms to appear, then the open jar has the variable. That's the one where flies can get to the meat. So we would call that the experimental condition. Any jar that blocks the variable, then, is going to be a control condition. So the jar with the lid is a control condition because it does not have the variable. Flies cannot get to the meat. And the jar with the cloth is a control condition because while air can get to the meat, flies cannot. And we're defining the variable as fly access to the meat. So this experiment, then, has two control conditions and one experimental condition. And the point of having an experimental condition and a control condition is to compare the outcomes here. We want to set up an experiment where these two conditions have only one thing different, and that is the variable of interest. So the experimental condition has the variable, the control condition lacks the variable. And if we get flies, or get worms in this case, and no worms in this case, then we can conclude that it's the variable that's responsible for the worms showing up in this condition and the lack of the variable explains why there are no worms in this condition. To wrap this up, then, let's, let's go ahead and uh, see how our thinking format can be applied to Reddy's 
a simple experiment with just the two conditions. So remember he had an open jar and a jar with a lid. And he was testing the idea that fly access to the meat was causing spontaneous generation. You'll remember that the thinking format that we're going to use is the if and then format. Next to the if, we put the hypothesis. That's our first attempt at the explanation. Next to the and, we put the experimental condition. What are we doing to test the hypothesis? After the then, we put the prediction. What should happen if the hypothesis is true? So let's see how it applies to Reddy's condition. If the worms, that is the larva, hatch from fly eggs laid on the meat by the mother fly. That's the hypothesis, that it's the flies that are causing worms to appear. So A causing B, it's a typical hypothesis. The and is the experiment. We prevent the eggs from being laid on the meat by putting the meat in a closed jar. So notice that's our experiment. In fact, we're setting up a control condition in our experiment. We already have the open jar. We already know what happens there. The then, then the meat should have no worms. Notice that prediction follows from the truth of the hypothesis and the experiment that we do. If this hypothesis is true, that flies have to get to the meat to lay eggs that turn into worms, and we prevent the flies from getting to the meat, then the meat should have no worms. Right. So now we just include the results as we know them to be. The meat in the closed jar had no worms. Since that's the same as predicted, so same as the then statement up here, then our interpretation is the hypothesis is supported. And what was the hypothesis? That the worms are hatching from fly eggs. So you see the interpretation then is the explanation of the results. Why did the closed jar have no worms? Because the flies couldn't get there to lay the eggs. So Reddy is going to conclude from this experiment that the worms came from the flies and not spontaneous generation. But of course, as we've seen, the believers in spontaneous generation might have gone on to say that, well, fresh air is required. And that's why Reddy had to include the jar with the cloth. And we could set up another if and then f format to capture the results of this experiment, but we can do that at another time.